Well, welcome as well to you on the live stream. Uh, those watching remotely, it's very good to have you with us as well. And uh, we've got a, a little congregation here scattered around within St. Nicholas and glad to be together again uh, as things are changing so much in the uh, world around and plans for Christmas and so on. Uh, I'm going, later on in the service, I'm going to ask this question, which is up on the screen now. So it's a little chance to have a think about it and for you at home uh, to be ready to text the answer to me. If you know my number, I'll give my number later um, and uh, you, you might even start typing the, the text and have it ready to send, send later so that you're not disadvantaged in relation to the people in the room here, because we're about 30 seconds ahead of you, I think. And the question's going to be, what are some things we want to do when we see someone in our family or a friend, someone we love, what are some of the things that we want to do? Okay, which we may not be able to do at the moment. So, um, we're all having changing plans for Christmas. And as we plan for Christmas Eve, um, here's something to bear in mind, that the Chris Dingle service, and I'll do a Chris Whitty next slide, please. Uh, the Chris Dingle service on uh, Christmas Eve is only online. It's not here in the church. And it's not on the YouTube channel. It's on Zoom. So you need those Zoom details which are on the screen now and they'll be in my email update as well. Uh, type in the, the meeting ID and the passcode light and then we'll be able to see each other and our Christingles. Now, does everyone know what a Christingle is? I know a Christingle is new to some people and a great long-standing tradition in Barthampton for many other people. So what are the things that you need to have ready if you're going to make a Chris Stingle during that Zoom call? Um, can you call, call some things out, one thing each? Orange, thank you, Robin. What else do you need? An orange and a... Red tape, just one thing, Teddy, thank you. Some red tape, so you could use insulating tape or a red ribbon. And Hilary said a candle, thank you. And Alexander? A little bit of tin foil to go, yes, that's um, an extra kind of safety feature, I think, that, that goes well between the candle and the orange. Anything else you'll need? Anybody? Sweets, yes. Um, as in that picture there. Or you can use raisins, but I think... I mean, both of those things have got lots of sugar in it. It'd be better to do vegetables, wouldn't it? We could have some Brussels sprouts. Or... And, um, and how do you hold the sweets onto the orange? With some sticks, yes, cocktail sticks. So you need four cocktail sticks. There's nothing on the screen here. Right. So, welcome back, people watching remotely. Sorry, we lost you for a bit there, and apparently the, the sound went before the picture, I think. But so, uh, good to be back together. And I've just been, just turned to Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, and we read what the angel said to Joseph that, I, well, he, he was, after... The angel had spoken to Joseph. Matthew tells us that this was fulfilling what God had said through the prophet. The virgin will, give, will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are with us. Thank you for sending your son, the Lord Jesus, who is Emmanuel, God with us. Please help us to remember that and to grow in trusting him as we have this time together with him this morning. Amen. Now, we have, uh, some of 
you here and some other people who are probably watching from home have been recording a COVID safe version of the nativity story and we're looking forward to watching this together. So all being well, that will come up on the screen here in church and be on screen for those at home. So this is uh, when God showed up. There's an old Jewish expression that goes like this. People make plans, God laughs. We think we know what's going to happen, and we really don't. Sound familiar? We have plans, but God shows up with other plans. And sometimes he shows up in person. A couple of thousand years ago, there was another very weird year. And if they'd had the internet back then, maybe the Christmas story would have gone like this. It all started when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Herod, Quirinius here. Can you hear me? You're on mute. It's that red button. The one beside the firstborn. Just press it. Oh, never mind. You're going to have to listen. You're going to have to cancel everything. The feasts, the games, the parties. It's all over. We just had a message from on high. From God. By God, of course, I mean Caesar Augustus. He wants everybody to be registered in their own hometown for tax reasons. I know. Why can't they just complete the tax return like everyone else in January? But this is different. This is a big one. It's going to be hard to organise. It's going to be an admin nightmare. But it's going to have to be done. Everybody back to their hometown. Why are you sniffling? It's not that hard to do. Just get on. Get, get on and do it. Now. Steve? It's Joseph. You're on mute. No, press the, uh, no, you see the button that, oh, it doesn't matter. Can you mind the workshop and finish turning those shepherd's crooks? I know, I'm really sorry. I was going to do them, but I've got to go back to Bethlehem to register. And I'm taking Mary, who isn't technically my wife, but, Long story short, God showed up in a dream. I know it sounds weird, but I haven't been eating cheese. This angel said it so straight up. Mary's going to have a baby, and I'm to call him Jesus. Apparently it means God saves. Anyway, sorry to drop you in it, but I've got problems too. I don't have luggage that fits on a donkey for a start. And feed the cat, Steve. Bye. Ready, Mary, go. Mum, you're on mute. If you just don't worry, I'll talk. I haven't got long. Jesus is coming over. Beth, um, I'm going to Bethlehem with Joseph. He's from Bethlehem, the city of David. I'm having a baby that was not planned quite as soon. Well, but well, God showed up, so plans have changed. He sent an angel to talk to me. I, I was making flatbread at the time. He, was, he said I will become pregnant and give a birth to a son and name him Jesus. He will be great and people will call him the son of the Most High, the Lord God will give him the throne of King David, his ancestor. He will rule over the people of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. So, to as you say, which I said, I, I am the servant girl of the Lord, let, let, uh, let this happen to me, as you say, which seems like the right thing to say at the time. So I'm off to Bethlehem. Mum, I'll bring you a souvenir. 
Casper, Casper, you're on mute. Don't worry, there's no time to talk. We need to pack for a long journey going west. Yes, I know you wanted to go to that party because the stars said you may be lucky in love, but plans have changed. God showed up. Look outside, it's the brightest star you've ever seen. It's like something coming out of heaven. You only get that once in a, well, ever. It's a sign and we need to investigate. Remember where God's people came from? Yes, Israel. We need to go there and get, I get this feeling we need to bring gold, frankincense and, have you got any myrrh? Yes, put that in. And maybe some, a rattle, a cow pole and some formula. I'll get the camels ready. Meet you first thing. Marcus, Marcus, you're on mute. That's on purpose, because I'm the king. I tell you what to do, and I don't care what you have to say. It's bad enough I had to cancel that big feast I was planning because of the census. And now this. I was planning another feast to celebrate how brilliant I am, and then those three men from the east turn up wanting to see the king. And when I said, you found him, bow down and help yourself to grapes, they said they were looking for a baby who was born to be king of the Jews. They saw his star in the east and came to worship him. They say that God showed up. I'm the king of the Jews. Ask Quirinius. My son is to be the king next, not this baby. Marcus, I don't care how you do it or what you have to do, but find that baby. Just myself. I've just seen something amazing. There, we were we were telling stories on the hillside. I was in the middle of one which David fights Goliath. He does a really good Goliath voice. It always cracks me up. Yeah, but God showed up as well, and everything changed. There was a massive, like, army of angels singing, telling us. What did they say? A saviour has been born in David's town. He is Christ the Lord. We'll find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. We want to go and have a look. So, Jim, can you come? out and mind the flock. They're in no trouble. <laughs> uh, well, not too much trouble, at least. I've left you my crook. Those are the ones that have been made by um, Joseph. He's late, but that's a bit weird. Well, anyway, I'm going off to Bethlehem. Bye. Hello, Dad. I can see you, but I can't hear you. You're on mute. It doesn't matter because you're an ox, so you can't talk. I can, which is weird, but then right now is everything is weird. There I was, settling down for the night in the stable, when these two humans showed up. They had a donkey which started to eat my dinner. Not fair. And then there was a big commotion and screaming and shouting. And then a third human showed up, a really small one, like a human like a human calf, although he was the size of a lamb. And do you know what they did with him? They put him in my feeding trough. Am I supposed to eat him? I may have four stomachs, but I can't eat that. I'm a herbivore. Then some shepherds showed up, but I don't have to listen to them. And then these wise men came from the east with very odd presents, and now it's all quiet again. I just... I just wanted to say, send me some hay because what's left is now bedding. Hay for bedding? Talk about posh. Who does this baby think he is? I'm hungry. Send food. But, but he's perfect. I know everyone says that about their babies, but this one really is. We called him Jesus, Mum. I know you like the name Sarah Babel. 
But the angel said Jesus, but but he will also be known as Emmanuel, which means God with us. So because this uh, despite despite all the plans God really showed up. Oh sweetie. Oh John. Well done, children and grown-ups. Thank you for that presentation of the, the nativity story. Now, what are some of the things that we want to do when we see someone in our family, some, someone we love, um, that we may not be able to do? People at home, send me a text. I've had a few texts coming in about various things, which I will read out later. Um, and on this question, why not talk in, in here, if you're near somebody, have a little chat about those things, and then we'll call some things out. And people at home, um, obviously, will be talking, if there's more than one person at the, at the screen, about some of the things that we want to do. In fact, let's start calling them out straight away in here, if you can think of something. Yes, David? Eating together. Eating together which um, is very restricted at the moment, isn't it? So we do miss that. Anything else? Hug. Robin? Drinking together. Drinking together. And Tim says a hug. Yeah. So no hugging. In fact, we've got, we've got to stay two meters apart, haven't we? This is, this is um, a stick that is two meters long. So that's how... Teddy, can you come out to the front and show us how far away you and I have to stand. You stop now. Look, if you're that far away from me there, we're two metres now. So we can't hug, can we? Or shake hands or anything. OK, thank you. You can go back. Now, my phone's been buzzing. Let's see what other people are saying. Um, Hannah says, hug them. Um, oh, Sylvie says, well done on the play. Loved it. And here's one from my mum. Definitely time for a, a kiss and hug time. That's a reference to what I used to do when I was a little boy. After a meal, I would stand on the chair and stretch out my arms and say, kiss and hug time. Um, walk together and talk together are other things. And we can do some of those things, can't we? Walk outside and we can talk on the phone and on Zoom as well as from a bit of a distance. Nigel and Annette say hug them. Liz Shepherd says give them a big hug. And there's Hannah's one again, hug them. And Angela Donald says give them a big kiss. And Emily Peel, the rest, Emily must be at home with Hetty the dog because um, the rest of the family are here, but Emily recovering from her operation at home. And she, oh, Emily says be able to make plans. Yeah, it would be nice to be able to make plans, wouldn't it? And uh, Phil says, what an amazing effort by everyone. Brilliant. I watched Molly do this as a teacher for many years and understand the work involved. Well done, a triumph. Sorry, I'm uh, on a different thread there. So there are some of those things that we want to do with people we love and we want to be close to one another. And at the moment, in lots of ways, we have to be distant from each other. And that's really frustrating. The, I'm s slightly uh, changing what I was going to say when we were thinking about three households getting together, which doesn't seem quite so relevant now. But um, Jesus did something very dangerous on the first Christmas. It can be dangerous now for us to get closer than two metres together and spend that time with someone from outside our household because the virus can spread. We're, we stay with our household or perhaps a bubble with one other person who lives on their own can, can join our bubble. Well, Jesus lived in a lovely place in heaven completely safely with God where there's no virus and nothing wrong and he came 
to live in our bubble. That's why Jesus was born as a baby. And we human beings had made this isolation. We'd pushed God out of our lives, and so we were isolated. But he didn't leave us on our own and distanced from him. Let's listen now straight from the Bible to how the angel explained Jesus joining our bubble. So Sarah is going to come and read a few verses from the Bible for us. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Thank you very much, Sarah. Now, there's a puzzle coming up on the screen with some words from one of those verses. Um, And... Can we remember what that verse said? Can we complete this puzzle? You have to find a word that rhymes with the picture to complete the verse. You will name him Jesus because he... And then this is... What's that picture of? Yeah, yeah, Alexander? It's a glass of water that has spilled. So it's a spill... And what's a word beginning with W that rhymes with spill? Water doesn't rhyme with spill. (laughs) Samuel knows, don't you? (laughs) He will. And then the next picture is save. Yes, because it's a wave, but it begins with S, rhymes with wave. He will save his people from... That's, what's that picture? A pear. So the word is there. He will save his people from there. And then I expect Anna can tell what this picture is. <laughs> it's the bins. So he will save his people from their sins. And that's why he was called Jesus. Because the name Jesus means the Lord saves So he came into our bubble to rescue us. He's like the vaccine to to save us from our sins, which is the, the virus that we've all got in our hearts. And then the next puzzle is um, not a rhyming one this time. It's just a filling in the, the letters, some mixed up letters there. They will call him Emmanuel, which is a more complicated name, and the name Emmanuel means God with us. Yeah, he's come down into our bubble, that baby born at Christmas is God with us. So we thank God for coming to be with us. Some of us are longing to be with the people we love. We haven't been close to them for ages now. And God is longing for us to turn to him and trust him to forgive us for our sins, the way we push him out of our lives, and let him be our friend and our king. And that means that we can talk to him and he hears us because he's close to us so we're going to do that now we're going to pray and the Peel family are coming to uh, lead us in some prayers let's pray
Thank you, Father God, that you didn't leave us alone, but came in, came to us in Jesus to rescue us. Amen. Amen. We are sorry for our sins. Sometimes we live as though we don't want to be God. Please forgive us. Amen. Amen. Please help families to make good decisions about whether to see each other safely or not meet up this Christmas. Please be with us and all the people who are on their own or sad about not seeing their family. Amen. Amen. Lord, please help us to love you and love each other. Amen. Help us, Lord, to share the good news of Jesus with people that don't know him yet. Please may lots of people come to our Zoom Christingle and start to find out more about Jesus. Amen. And our family prayer that the Lord Jesus taught us is one that's quite a, a long prayer. We say it very often and we get a chance to learn it by heart by repeating it again and again. And some of the younger members of church may struggle to read it on the screen and may not be able to remember it all the way through. But if you know some of it, try and join in as many of the words as you can out loud and let's pray together to our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, singing, of course, is very different at the moment. And being in church together, we can't sing together. Um, and we're all having our masks on. And people at home may like to sing along to some carols and so on we normally in the nativity service we would have a few really well-known carols to join in and sing together if you want uh, to do that come back later today on um, on youtube and uh, there are a couple of opportunities i'll tell you about later for singing along what we're going to do now is join in this is something that we can all do here or we can try to do join in silently with a carol in sign language. So very grateful for um, the Christian group in Brit British Sign Language producing this video of a new carol this year called In a Town Called Bethlehem. And that will come up on the screen shortly. And there's an, an interpreter, translator, uh, demonstrating or singing the carol in sign language and we'll be able to listen to it with our ears but we'll also be able to try copying the actions that she is doing to, to joining this carol. Now I don't know British sign language and I know there are some people here in Bathampton who do, who may be watching and be able to join in fluently with this but I think we could all have a try at um, copying these actions and see whether we can join in uh, with this wonderful news about the baby who was born in a town called Bethlehem. When the scene was set and the time was right, heavens gave to love and a place to lay in a time called Bethlehem. Now the way was hard. Going tough, but a feeding trough. 
So people were doing very well in here in church. I wonder how you got on at home with uh, learning a bit of or copying a bit of British Sign Language there. I, there's a piece of paper in uh, each of the places here. Um, and this is something that uh, Anna is going to email out to the update list. So if you're on that, you'll, be, you'll receive this and you might be able to, to do it later. I'm going to demonstrate a little craft activity which you can't all do in church because we can't be passing scissors around and things. But um, the people at home might do. So the, the piece of paper, the document that will be emailed is like this. And... It's got lots of strips, which I've started cutting already. And all of them have, each strip has God at one end and us at the other end. And so as we cut them out, here's one that says, we're not alone. Be and that's because Jesus is God with us. Here's another one that says, Jesus saves us. We learned that was what his name, Jesus, means. He'll save his people from their sins. And God with us, Emmanuel, and there's another one. Yeah, one says Emmanuel and one says God with us. And so um, what you can do with these is get each strip, and you've probably guessed it, we can make a paper chain. So ways of making a paper chain you might use glue I'm going to use a stapler and when we bring the chain round God at one end of the loop meets us at the other end of the loop and it's God with us and so that one says we're not alone here is Jesus saves us and bring together God and us that's what Jesus does and uh, let's put a few more of these on Emmanuel thread it through join it up God with us Emmanuel and then uh, what's the next one going to say 
God with us. There's a definite theme on this chain, isn't there? And as the chain gets longer, we get more and more reminders that Jesus is God with us. And so that means we're not distant from him anymore. Emmanuel, God with us. Put that on and staple it on. So my chain's getting quite long, isn't it? I've got lots more strips here to turn into a longer chain and then there'll be a nice Christmas decoration that we can have up at home. So if you've got a, a colour printer at home, you should be getting this email at, at the end of this service and then if you'd like to print it out, cut it up, glue or staple or sellotape and make your paper chains to decorate your house and remind you Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you for joining in the, uh, the carol um, in British Sign Language. We talked about the opportunity to sing out loud and join in carols, um, which you can do as loud as you like at home if you're on um, the YouTube watching the carol service from Claverton this afternoon and uh, that's called a very Claverton Christmas and uh, readers from Claverton have recorded the, the various readings as part of that service. We've got music from some different sources of some lovely carols to join in there. So that's four o'clock on our YouTube channel and this evening there's another chance of some uh, nice carols to watch and perhaps sing along to coming all the way from London so it's as though we're going to get in a in a bus together which obviously we're not able to do physically together but a virtual bus to London to a big church called All Souls Langham Place and it's a carol concert that they broadcast last night and we can watch a recording of that together. And after both of these things, whether you come this afternoon at 4 or this evening at 7.30, afterwards we'll have virtual mince pies on Zoom. So using our usual vir um, Zoom coffee number. Um, is, does the next slide give that number? Here we are. Um, so remember jot that down or something if you haven't used it before, if your Zoom's not going to remember it. Um, straight after this service, we'll have it as, as virtual coffee, and you put in the password Jesus. For the, the carol services later on, all being well, there won't be a password, there'll be a waiting room instead. Um, so, but the same number, 860-2531-2351 which is very easy to get mixed up. Uh, so come along on Zoom. For the, for the virtual coffee, this one, straight off. It is 861. I'm so sorry to be misleading on that. Well spotted, Anna. So anyone who's copied down the number that's on the white correct that zero to a one. At the beginning, it's 861. And we've lost it again. There it is. Oh, Anna's correcting it on screen. Very clever. Right. And meanwhile, I'm going to read out some more texts because, um, oh, one has just come in from somebody here, hasn't it? It says this is Alexander anyway, so I presume it's this one. And it says... Hug them, hug them. Oh, sorry, I got that a bit late. That was 10 minutes ago you sent that. Right. And uh, before we did all the texting about uh, what we would like to do with our friends and family, we've had a couple of messages. Nigel Shepherd says, John T, you're on mute. Um, so very uh, topical. Becky says, the window photos on the live stream before the service started, along with live music, was wonderful. Thank you, Robin and Margaret. You see, Robin Donald took the photos 
of the window trail. And anyone who hasn't done the window trail yet, do you can pick up one of these um, leaflets outside the first house on the left on Hanton Hill as you go up. And uh, there are some outside church as well. Or you can follow it on, from the church website. And that takes you through the story, seeing all the pictures in the windows. And that, if you missed it because you uh, only arrived bang on 10.45, you can probably pause and rewind at the end of the service and watch it then if you like from YouTube um, and see those pictures. And thank you, Margaret, for playing live piano in here. I'm glad that came across well through the through the sound system. So we're gradually um, improving things on the live stream. And um, right. Uh, Anna, is there anything else I need to say about the technical things today? Lip sync, so we, we thought we'd solved this thing of the sound and the picture being out of alignment, but that's gone a bit wrong again today, so sorry about that. Um, right. Let's have a final prayer. May the joy of the angels, the wonder of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the faith of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Lord Jesus himself be yours this Christmas time and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.